Welcome back to the Tin Barn. Uh, I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today's video is going to be just kind of a little short clip. There won't be any machining in this video. But a couple weeks ago, uh, I posted a couple pictures on the uh, YouTube group on Facebook, YouTube Machinist group on Facebook, uh, about a little project I had going on above my equipment right here, my mill and my lathe. When I added on to the shop uh, last month, built this addition on, I made it a point to line up the lathe, which is sitting right here, the bed on the lathe, I made it a point to line it up with the center of the mill, which is back behind or on the same row here. So the, uh, the table on the mill and the, uh, and the bed on the lathe are in line with one another. I did that for the purpose of putting a track overhead to assist in changing out not only the three and four jaw and the collet chuck on the lathe, but also the rotary table and the vise on the uh, mill. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer over here and show you what I've got right now. I'm going to show you my mistake first and then hopefully uh, I've got a solution that will take care of the mistake. Okay, just to uh, clarify what I was saying earlier, I've got the camera set up now on the uh, far end of the mill table. This is the mill, of course, right here. Tail stock, this is the end of the lathe at this point, the uh, head stock of the lathe. And if you can make out in the video, directly in line with that is a file cabinet down here on the end. Uh, we'll get to this file cabinet in just a moment. Above this whole setup is a track. This track is the same thing that you would see on a uh, barn door uh, for the sliding doors to open the barn door. Behind that is a uh, about a three, uh, about a maybe an eighth inch cable. Uh, it's a coated cable. Uh, as a matter of fact, what it was was one of those uh, stakes where you can stake your dog outside and hook the cable to them and they can run for a little bit. But my problem is with my little dots and the, uh, the cable weighed more than the dog did. So what this is for, uh, I'll show you in more detail a little bit later, but this is gonna be where the uh, power wire uh, slides back and forth on. That'll be the, the uh, storage system for the power wire. So now let's move back down to the other end. Down here at this end of the track, this is the end where the file cabinet is. I have a, another one of these gear motors. Uh, I try to watch on eBay as often as I can uh, and pick these up whenever they come up. It's 24 volt DC uh, uh, gear motor, about 56, 60 RPMs. I machined a, a drum for that out of simply a three inch piece of aluminum uh, round bar, round stock. And I also built a motor control or built a control box for the unit, which is right here. Uh, has speed control and up and down. For each of the uh, implements that goes on the lathe and the mill, I come up with a little uh, hangers for them to pick up, to pick them up with. Now, as you'll see, I'm going to turn this down the speed down pretty slow on it. You'll see it picks it up very nicely, but as soon as I remove power you'll see the problem I ran into. Picks the device up very nicely, but watch what happens as soon as I remove power. The gear motor has no brake on it. So I've got no control really of the of coming down. The speed on on this, on this three jaw and four jaw chuck was not that bad. But the uh, 
uh, rotary table with the chuck on it is about twice as heavy. And the problem is, it's not a controlled descent. It just, when it comes down, it comes down. I can use the motor control, and once I get to a certain speed, or once I get to a point, I can turn the speed down on it and hold it. Pretty much hold it. Uh, the problem with that is, though, uh, I'm putting a strain, I'm, I'm actually stalling the motor for this downward, uh, for the downward trend or uh, downward descent, which cannot be good on the motor. Now to hold it up in place, uh, let's see if you're still in frame to see the, see the top up there. I have a, I put a safety chain on there. But again, that will hold it and I can slide along this track To the position that it needs to go in to mount on the uh, being a chuck to mount on the lathe. But again, the problem I run into is I have no control over how speed, how fast it comes down. So, what the plan is, and it's obvious that I was using something for which it was not designed. This is a gear motor. It works extremely well, forward and reverse, as working as a gear motor. But it's not to be not meant to be a hoist. It does not have a brake on it. So I'm going to take the rollers that are up in here, the handle off, and of course the power cord, and I'm going to actually put a winch up there and I'll be back in a little bit with the winch mounted. Here's the winch that I'm gonna be using. Uh, if I'm not badly mistaken, I'm pretty sure this is the same winch that Harold on uh, Amateur Redneck Workshop used on his uh, lift mechanism to put the uh, put a rotary table on his uh, mill as well. I think he started out First off, trying a, a windshield wiper gear motor and with belts and so forth, and that didn't quite work out for him. And I'm pretty sure this is the one he settled on. Uh, this is rated at 110 single cable or 220 uh, with the cable doubled. Uh, 110 would be more than sufficient for the size of my uh, chucks and rotary table. But since I don't have any control over the speed of this, I double, I'm going to double the cable up, and get, uh, that way I'll have half the speed, uh, so that you know I'm not lowering it faster than I can control. And 220 pounds. The rollers that's inside that barn door track. Uh, this is one of them right here. Uh, these are just standard rollers from the hardware store. These were originally made that had a bolt that hung down from here that suspended the door on, and it could, it could rotate, it could swing. The only thing I did was, of course, after removing that bolt, I welded this up solid on each end. And they got oil all over them right now. This is, this is some stuff I have for a project from about, I'm going to say about 12 years ago and uh, I'm repurposing it for this uh, today. But these are what the rollers look like. I have a plate that I've put the bolt hole pattern into. That will bolt down on, the, uh, on top of the winch itself here. Rollers will be up here as such, one on each end, and the handle on there. So I'll get that bolted up and get this hung back up and be back in a moment. All right, I have the the winch mounted up there now. Got the handle on it. For a cable organizer, not necessarily cable, but power wire, what I'm using are these 
Let's see if I can get one over here in front. What I'm using are these just standard old shower curtain uh, hooks. This is hanging over the uh, cable I showed you at the beginning of the video, the uh, coated cable. That's just hanging over that. And then approximately over 36 inches, I wire tied, used a wire tie, and attached the extension cord to these hooks. One there, of course one down here. Again, about every three foot. I had a, about a 20 foot extension cord. So hopefully as, if this works at plan, as planned, the cord will uh, kind of take itself up uh, in somewhat of an orderly fashion. And then, of course, in return, it should just pull back out as usual. Now, I'll see if we can get set up and see how this works for, for picking up the, uh, the lathe and the mill accessories. The drawers in the file cabinet have an uh, indention in the bottom of them, so I really don't have to concern about the chuck rolling around in there. It sets down in fine. The hook on the winch uh, is about too big, well it is too big for the eye bolts that I'm using. So for right now I've just got a, a dog clasp and a, a quick link. I'll probably replace that with a carabiner. There it is, suspended. No power on the winch now. And of course it's staying there because a true winch has a brake on it. Uh, and to put it in place would be just a matter of rolling this down the track. Two finger rolling. I'm going to drop this one back down and get hold of the uh, rotary table. Each drawer, the way I set this up, this top drawer has an empty spot in the back of it for the three jaw chuck. So I would bring the three jaw off the lathe drop it off in here, pick up the four jaw and carry it over. The second drawer has a empty place in the back of it for the, uh, uh, for the mill vise. Let's turn back down so you can see what I'm talking about. Again, this top drawer has an empty spot for the three jaw, that's its home. The back of this one has an empty spot for the, uh, the mill vise, and I have the rotary table in front of it. And the way I'm holding that, to be certain that it hangs there, is on the bottom of this uh, uh, pin that I have clamped in the jaw of the chuck right now, but on the bottom of it, there's a disc that is below the chuck jaws, goes down in the hole in the chuck, so there's no way that can pull out. The weak link in this entire setup are these quarter inch eye bolts. Uh, and they are, they're limited for 80 pounds or rated for 80 pounds a piece. Everything else, uh, these uh, dog hooks, I think are 200 pounds, 800 pounds. The winch is uh, 220 pounds. So I don't think I've got any issues at all with the uh, 
um, with the weight limits. Um, 80 pounds. Uh, this, I'm guessing, I tell you what, we'll stop guessing. Let me drop this down. I'll be right back. This uh, rotary table of mine, which I think is a six inch with a five jaw chuck on it, weighs 36 pounds. I didn't set all this up because I couldn't pick up 36 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever. I did this just, just to keep from having to bend over. Uh, I don't have the strongest back in the world. Uh, it's don't really have any issues with my back, but that's what I'm trying to prevent is this bending over, picking up, and so forth. I think a setup like this would work fine for much larger equipment. Um, uh, the, uh, I'm pretty sure the, the tracks, the barn tracks that are up at the top, barn door tracks, I think they're rated for 800 pounds. Uh, but I'm not 100% certain on that. These are uh, they're made in USA by uh, National, uh, Stanley National, uh, available at Lowe's, Tractor Supplies, and places like that. So if you're interested in doing something like this, check it out. Hope you enjoyed this short little video, and I'll try to be back soon with some machining work.